Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Tristan from UtahCO.Ninja. Today we're going to do something really fun. We're going to look at how to optimize our website through Weebly. So we're gonna need a couple different things for this. First and foremost, it's always great to have an Excel sheet. We're going to be putting our notes in here. We're also going to need our Weebly site. We're gonna be using a tool called SpyFu, which is free. And we're also gonna be using the Google Keyword Planner, which is also free. Now this is a dummy account, so don't worry about that. So first things first, we have to decide what exactly the goal of our website is. Who is our customer? Who is it we're trying to get to look at our website? And what do we want them to do? Now my goal for this particular website is to target people who are kind of like me. You know, people in their late 20s, early 30s, who are looking to play a game, you know, for 5, 10, 15 minutes and be able to do a quick session and then get out. You know, because we have to deal with work, school, family, and all those other responsibilities that we should be dealing with. And that will also affect the way that we actually optimize this website. So the way that we're going to be making money from this site, hopefully, is we're going to be doing these video game reviews and we're going to place affiliate links to those games. So that way if anybody says that they'd like to download the game or they want to buy the game, then they have that option. They go to the website that we've set up and they can purchase the game from there and we get a portion of that purchase. So that's the monetization plan for this particular site. And the way that we're going to do that and where we're gonna bring those people to those links is through a video game review. And we're going to be doing that here on the site and also through YouTube. As you may have noticed, I kind of like YouTube. I use it a lot. So let's go ahead and hop into this. Okay, so the first thing we want to know is actually where we're going to be putting all this information on our website. And there are a couple different ways that we can do this. Now, for your general settings for the entire site, you'll come over here to settings, SEO, and there you go. Now you can see we already have some of these in place. Now, the first thing here, our site description, that's what we get when we look at this. So for example, if you do a search for Pokemon Yellow Remake, this right here is the site description. And so is this right here. It just lets us know what the page is actually about so we can kind of get a little snippet of what we're going to read before we actually open the link. And this is really helpful. Your meta keywords are keywords that describe the site and describe what it is you're gonna be doing. Now, usually I like to use really long keywords like you can see in these first couple ones here, like video game reviews for adults and games to play at work. And then you have shorter ones. Now, the problem with shorter ones is that there's just a lot more competition. It's really, really hard to rank for something like this. So check this out. We'll say video game review. We're gonna come over here to spy foo and we're gonna drop that in here. We're gonna see what it says. Okay, so we have 720 searches per month. There are, here in the US, we have 990 globally, and it has a ranking difficulty of 71. So what does that mean? That means at a scale of one to 100 of how hard it would be to actually rank for this particular term, we're looking at a 71, which is pretty difficult. And then we can see related keywords, so like download game computer, computer blackjack games, all games, download video games, and stuff like that. So if you wanted to pick up some other keywords that were related to this, here's where you can do that. Now this section here where it talks about the most successful advertisers and their best ads, these will actually let you see who is advertising right now for these keywords and what they're paying for it. So this is Walmart, for example, they have a monthly budget of $166,000 and that's what they're paying for in ads. And then we have a couple of other ones down here that are doing the same. And you can see a lot of these people are paying a lot of money to place ads. Now scrolling down a little bit further, we have our ranking history. We can actually see who's been ranking for these terms over the last two years. And we can actually spread out a little bit further, but this is what we wanna look at. And then here again, we can actually see who is ranking for these terms. We can see our difficulty again. So there's our clicks. We can see our social domains. We have some WordPress and some YouTube showing up on there. We have 558 million results. We have quite a bit of diversity. And here again, we can see who's ranking and how difficult it would be to outrank them. And it'll even show us the estimated number of clicks that we're receiving. So for example, GameSpot is number one. It looks like they just moved up to number one, pushing Metacritic down one spot. These guys get an estimated 51 clicks per month. These ones are getting 26. And this is how hard it would be to outrank them, which is pretty difficult. So probably not something we're gonna be going after because that's a lot more work and time and money than we have to invest in this. Okie dokie, makes sense. So video game reviews, kind of a little bit more difficult than what we'd be wanting to go after. 
we can also go after something like video game reviews for adults. Now they may not actually have this in their system yet. So since we don't have the information here, let's head somewhere else. This is our Google Keyword Planner. Now this is really easy to use, it's really easy to find, just do a search for, Google, or for the Google Keyword Planner. So what we want to do, we have three different options here where we start. We have search for new keywords using a phrase, website, or category. We can get search volume data and trends, and we can also multiply our keyword list to get new keywords. So the first thing we want to do, we're going to put over here, video game reviews for adults. Now we can do some different things over here. We can say these are the product categories. We can say this is the website. So we can actually get a little bit of information that's related to the site. So we can kind of rank a little bit better. Here are the filters that we can add. So we can say, we just want people in the US. We just want people in Canada. We just want people in Mexico. The specific languages, Google itself, we can put negative keywords. So if we don't want, for example, to see video game reviews for kids, we would put for kids in here and that would remove it. And then a little bit more. Let's go ahead and hit get ideas. Okay, so these are all the related searches that came up and it looks like we have an average of a lot. So that's, see our low point here is 20, almost 21 million and our high point is almost 43 million. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Over here we have our ad groups. Now these are groups of keywords and it also shows us their average monthly searches for the, for the keywords in that group. We have the competition that we're looking at and we also have our suggested bid. Now competition in this case doesn't refer to the number of websites or the quality of those websites. It refers to the number of people who are paying for those ad spaces. So let's take a look at this real quick. Let's go with PC games. Let's see what they have to say. All right, so PC games has an average of 368,000 searches per month, it has very low competition, and they suggest that you would pay 29 cents per click. PC game comes at 74,000, download PC games comes in at 22, and buy PC games comes in at just shy of 2,000. So this is actually probably gonna be a good one for us. We'll say buy PC games. And we can even take this and come back over here and add some other keywords to it and see if there's something else we can grab from it. So for example, if we wanna add the word coupon to this, we have PC sales, PC games for sale, PC deals, game vouchers. Game vouchers gets a lot of searches. So let's see here, game voucher codes. So we can actually use this keyword for our website because one of the things that we have on there are coupons and discount codes. So once we have these, we want to come down here, we wanna copy all of these. We're gonna grab our Excel sheet and we're going to paste these. And there we go. Now we have our keywords. And just to be safe, we're also gonna grab this information as well. And there we go. So we have our keyword, we have our search traffic, we have our competition, and we have a suggested bid. We're probably not gonna care about the suggested bid, but what is handy about this is if you ever decide to do like a paid post, then you can use this to kind of give you an idea of how much to charge for that post. So for example, if you have a website that's getting a thousand views a day, right? Or if you have a specific post that's getting a thousand views and somebody says, all right, we'd like you to do a post for us or to write a blog post for us, then you can take this number and say, okay, you would normally be paying you know, $290 for this post. If you pay me $200, then you know, I'll write the post for you. And that way you have kind of a fair way of saying how much your blog is actually worth. Now, of course, you could charge a little bit more, you could charge a little bit less. If you have a really high conversion, you can actually go a little higher than this. If your conversions are about the same, you might want to go over here. If your conversions are kind of low, you can go somewhere else. But the idea is for them to get a little bit of value out of your posts and out of your website and for you to make a little bit of money at the same time. So we'll go ahead and keep that on there just in case we ever need to use it. So what do we do with this? We come back over here to Weebly. Okay, so one of the things that we wanted to add to this was this one. We're going to put that right there. And we wanted to do this one, add that one, and let's add this one too, and there we go. We have now added a whole bunch of new coupon, okay, we have now added a whole bunch of keywords to our site. So now we've managed to work that into our site description, that will definitely help. Now we have some extra codes over here that we haven't seen before. 
This first one is our footer code that we're going to use for our Google Analytics. This lets us see how much traffic we're actually getting to the site. So for example, this is the site as it stands right now. If you want to find this, just hop over into Google, do a search for Google Analytics, and you will find this without any trouble. So the site has been live since the 8th, so like four days, and we've had six visits. That's pretty cool, but only two users. So, you know, we're getting there. One of this is probably me. And if you want to find that code, click on your admin, tracking info, and then you just copy this and paste it into your website right here. If you would like your Google Webmaster Tools, which is another handy dandy tool that you can use, just grab the code from them and do the same thing. And that's how we do the SEO for the general site all in and of itself. Now, if we want to do stuff for individual pages, we click on Pages. We're going to select the page that we want to optimize. We're going to come over here to Advanced. And you'll notice that we actually have the same fields. So if we want to give this page a different title, we would say um, Lava Dragons, your game reviews for adults in a hurry. And then we can grab our page description. Usually you don't want to duplicate that, but we're in a hurry. Our keywords, which we have right over here. We're gonna go with this one. Oops, there we go. So game voucher codes, game reviews for adults, uh, games to play at work, uh, game coupons, game discounts, game vouchers, and so on. Now we don't really need to mess with these two because we already have that set up under the general settings. But one of the things that you can do with this, for example, if you're doing remarketing through Facebook, then you can post one of your pixels on here or you can post it over here on the page itself. And that way it will trigger and we can track conversions and things like that. So that's pretty cool. So there's our home. And we would do the same thing with all of these. So I'm not going to bore you guys with that part because I'm going to have to go through and do it for each of the pages that we've set up. Fortunately, I only have, what, three, one, two, three, four, four pages. So it's not a huge deal, but that's how you do that. Now, for the last thing that we can optimize on here, we actually have our blog posts. So let's take a look at this one real quick. Our Doom 4 news, release dates, and gameplay. Now to set up and optimize these posts, we want to come over here to post options and we want to add our categories and then we also have advanced right here. Now in this part, we can actually put in the exact link that we want to show up on our page. Now, if you remember back over here on Google, we have these right here, okay? You can actually change these to add in some of your keywords. Now you do want to be careful because you can actually over optimize a page and it won't rank as high. So if you're just spamming the entire post with your keyword over and over again, probably not gonna rank. But if you'd like to have your own specific link that tells your users or viewers exactly what's going to be on that page, this is where you do that. You have the slash. So in this particular case, everything before the slash is going to say www.lavadragons.com slash. And now it says Doom 4 release dates and gameplay. And then down here we have our post title. Again, that's this right here. What is it called? And we have our post description right here. But that's how you do all this. And then again, you'll want to keep track of all your keywords using something like an Excel file or Word or anything else, just so that we can remember what you're using and how many times you've used it. Now you can use it for various posts and things like that, not a problem with it, but it does help to maintain a certain amount of consistency across the site. Now just to give you some tips and tricks and things that I've picked up over the years, there are a couple different things that I would suggest when you're putting together your keywords and when you're doing your keyword research. First, look at your site and look at who you're actually targeting. It's a really, really good idea to have a concept of who your viewer is, who your user is, and what it is specifically that they want. Now, I actually sat down for a day or two thinking about just who I wanted to target with this site. And basically, it came down to I'm looking for people around my age who are living busy lives. You know, we have work and school and family and other responsibilities that we need to be taking care of. And so we don't really have as much time to 
dedicate to playing games. We don't quite have as much money to invest in video games. And so what I'm looking for, something that I want, is I would like to be able to find a website that gives me a quick display of what I need to know about the game, how long I can play it, if it's something that I can pull out on my phone while I'm waiting for my wife in the store, or if it's something that I can play during a lunch break or anything like that. I'm also looking for coupons so I don't have to spend full price on a video game, especially because my wife would chew me out over it. And I also want to keep up to date on the news. And I'd either like to do that in writing so I can just read it, or I'd like to do it in a video so I can get the information quickly, effectively, and I can get all the pictures and everything else. And so that's kind of what I was thinking of when I was putting this blog together. I was building something that I would like and something that I would buy. Now, your target customer might be a little bit different. You might be looking for people who are interested in rhinoplasty, you know, nose jobs. You, you might be targeting people who are looking for a new car. You might be targeting people who are looking for carpet cleaning, you know, whatever it is that your business does or whatever affiliate you're trying to market. But I would definitely suggest that you make some sort of list and write down who that customer is, what their needs are, what the pain is that they're feeling, or what the problem is that they have, and how you are going to fix that problem for them. What's the value that you're going to be giving them so that way they come to your site, they benefit from it, and then they come back in the future when they have that need again. And then using that, you will want to design all the content of your website and also the use of your keywords because the people who are looking for your specific product or service are gonna be using very specific terms. And so it's important to know what those terms are. And then as far as actually using like titles and keywords and things like that, I'm a big fan of going after what are called long tail keywords, okay? They're the long keywords. They're a lot easier to rank for because usually there's a lot less competition and it's also a lot more specific. What I would suggest is you actually spend a few minutes going through Google and actually searching for things related to what it is that you want to sell and market. Look at the terms you're actually putting into Google in order to find the service that you're looking for. And those are gonna be the terms that you actually want to use for your posts and for your keywords and so on. And then the next thing you're going to want to do is you're also going to want to keep track of the traffic that you're actually receiving. So that's why Google Analytics is something that's so valuable because we can actually come over here and we can see where our traffic is coming from. So over here, for example, we have five hits coming directly from people who are actually typing in the URL, and that's probably me. And then we have one that's coming from a social site. We can click on that and see which social site we're looking at. Weebly. Ha! Huh, check that out. So I guess we lose the social page now. And we can look at some other things too. We can look and we can see how much time they're spending on the page. We can see their bounce rate. We can see how many pages they're actually looking at. We can look and see the actual flow that they go through on the site. So it looks like everybody's coming to the main page and then leaving. That's sad. And this can also help you identify any problems that your website might have. So for example, if we're looking at this and you know, instead of having five views, we had 500 views we know that there's definitely a problem with this main page and that people aren't able to go anywhere else. So we would want to re-optimize that page and make sure that we're answering the question that people are trying to find the answer for because that's what Google does. It finds answers to people's questions. So we wanna make sure that we're answering that question on that first page and we also wanna make sure that our links are all working. We wanna make sure that we have a clear way for our users to move from one page to the other in case they wanna find more information about something and so on and so forth. In fact, on one of my other blogs, this is something that I noticed that I was having a lot of traffic coming into my individual blog posts because they're well optimized, but they would come to the blog, they would read the post, and then they would leave. Now, that's fine. They're spending a good bit, amount of time on the post, and I was basically getting what I wanted, but I found that if I were to put related posts at the bottom of my blogs, then when someone would finish reading that blog post, and they enjoyed what they were reading, and they had the option to go out and read something else that was related to whatever I had just written about. And when I did that, I actually noticed that people were spending an extra 10, 15 minutes on my website reading all these extra posts, and they would go from post to post to post, and then they would come back and they would keep reading. And so it turned into something that was really valuable, and it's one of the reasons that why that other blog is ranking as well as it is. And it has absolutely zero competition. I think I'm the only uh, blogger on that particular subject. 
So this part of the optimization is called your on-page optimization. This is where we're making changes to the actual titles and the keywords and the descriptions of the website. Now we also have social media, which we would need to add to all this. That way people can come from Facebook and Twitter and everything else. And then we also have something called an off-page optimization. And that's where we would do those backlinks that we're looking at a little while earlier. Now what those backlinks do is they actually do two different things. They take traffic from one website and they send it to another. And, and then the other thing that it does is it kind of tells Google that your website has a certain amount of authority or credibility because other websites are linking to it. So if you have a whole bunch of websites in one specific industry and they'll link to another website, Google sees that and says, okay, this guy is popular. We're going to go ahead and make him number one or we're going to make him number two. So that's what backlinks do, and those are pretty important, but they can also be a little tricky and they can sometimes cause more damage than they do good. So that's something you definitely want to research very fully before you really get into it, just because it can be a little dangerous. You know, if you do something incorrectly or if you try to trick Google or scam it or anything like that. So I think that'll do it for this video. I hope that I have answered a lot of your questions. I hope that this video has been helpful. Of course, we have our new smiley face over here on the side of the screen, which is awesome. And if you do have any other questions, please let me know. I'm actually thinking about a way that I can do a little bit more in-depth help for a lot of you guys, because a lot of you are asking very specific questions that require me to look at your websites. And your stuff that's a little bit deeper than I would normally do here on YouTube. And I think I may have found a solution and I'll be presenting that to you guys here in the next little bit. And it's going to be a lot cheaper than my $200 an hour consultation fees. So uh, keep your eyes out for that. And don't forget that if you like this kind of content, if you want to learn more about using Weebly and digital marketing and websites and all that kind of fun stuff, that you can subscribe to this channel. I try to release new content every week. And I'm funny and I'm attractive. I think that'll do it for me though. So have yourselves a great day and I will see you later. Bye.